Hello, business analytic superstars, and welcome to chapter eight, opinion research. Uh, in this chapter, we're tackling a topic that affects both businesses and consumers alike, opinion research, and more specifically, uh, the art and science of designing surveys that actually yield useful insights. I'm sure uh, you've all seen those requests. Share your feedback, tell us how we did. And chances are uh, you've either skipped them or half-heartedly clipped through uh, them uh, to get through them as quickly as possible. Well, welcome to the era of survey fatigue, where people are increasingly inundated with requests for their opinions, and yet companies are more eager than ever to understand their customers. Uh, the goal of this chapter is simple. Uh, how do we design surveys that not only collect useful data, but also avoid being the kind that people roll their eyes at? Well, before we get into the intricacies of survey design, let's distinguish between two types of data that companies can collect on consumers, namely behavioral and attitudinal. Behavioral data is based on actual observed auctions. Uh, think of uh, what's in your shopping cart, uh, your browsing history, or the number of clicks on a particular product page. Uh, such data is valuable because it represents what people actually do, not just what they say they will do. Whereas attitudinal data uh, is all about what people think and feel, uh, their preferences, their tastes, their opinions. While behavioral data shows what happened, attitudinal data helps answer why it happened. For example, a person might browse a product page multiple times, but still not make a purchase. Is it because the product is too expensive or because the customer couldn't find enough information? Attitudinal data uh, gives you those crucial insights. Now, while you can invert attitudes from behaviors, uh, you know, people who bought this also tend to buy that, uh, there's still no substitute for directly asking your customers how they feel. But here's the catch. Uh, you need to ask the right questions in the right way. Survey design uh, is a bit like baking a cake. But sure, uh, you can uh, throw together some ingredients, but getting the recipe just right requires skill and attention to detail. Uh, a poorly designed survey uh, can return data that's incomplete, misleading, or even downright useless. So what makes for a well-designed survey? A few key things. Ask clear and precise questions. Vague questions lead to vague answers. For example, asking how do you feel about our product is far too broad. Instead, ask specific questions like, how satisfied are you with the performance of our product on a scale of one to 10? This not only makes it easier for respondents to answer, but also provides more actionable insights. Next, avoid leading questions. You know, those questions that try to nudge you towards a particular answer. Uh, that's a leading question, and they're a big no-no uh, in survey design. Instead of asking, don't you love how convenient our app is? Ask something neutral, like uh, how would you rate uh, the convenience of our app? Next, uh, make sure your response options are balanced and offer enough granularity. If you're asking a satisfaction question, you'll want a range from, let's say, very unsatisfied to very satisfied, with plenty of middle ground for those who fall somewhere in between. Don't force people into extreme answers if their opinion is more nuanced. Now. Let's talk about measurement and scaling, two essential concepts in opinion research that help ensure uh, your survey data is not just easy to collect, but also easy to analyze. In essence, uh, measurement refers to assigning numbers or labels to various responses. And scaling is how we categorize or rank these responses or indeed place them on a continuum. Uh, there are, in fact, four uh, common levels of measurement you need to be aware of. Nominal. Uh, this is the simplest form, uh, where data is categorized without any quantitative value. Uh, for example, a question like, uh, what's your favorite color, with responses like red, blue, and green, uh, is nominal. Ordinal. Uh, this goes a step further by ranking the responses. For example, uh, rank your satisfaction with our service from one, very unsatisfied, to five, very satisfied. 
So there's an order, but the differences between the responses aren't necessarily equal. Third is interval. Uh, this level allows for a, a meaningful difference between responses, but uh, there's no true zero. Uh, a classic example is temperature. While 30 degrees is warmer than 15 degrees, uh, we can't say that 30 degrees is twice as warm as 15 degrees. Finally, a ratio. A ratio scales have a true zero point, allowing for meaningful comparisons. Think of questions about age, income, how many products a person has purchased. There is a, a natural zero uh, that means something uh, in these cases. Understanding the different levels of measurement uh, is really crucial because they determine uh, what kinds of statistical analysis you can perform later on. Uh, you can't, for example, calculate an average for nominal data. Um, it's like you're trying to average your apples and oranges. It uh, just doesn't work. Uh, in addition uh, to understanding how to measure data, uh, you'll also need to uh, design questions using appropriate scaling techniques. Some uh, common techniques include uh, Likert scales. These are your classic, you strongly agree to strongly disagree scales. Uh, they're great for capturing attitudes across a, a spectrum and are a staple of survey design. Uh, semantic differential scales. Uh, here, uh, respondents rate something on a scale between uh, two opposite adjectives. For instance, uh, you might ask people to uh, rate your brand on a scale from your trustworthy to uh, untrustworthy. Uh, rating scales allow respondents to give a rating, uh, often from 1 to 10, for how they feel about a certain aspect of your product or service. Uh, these scaling techniques help ensure that the data you collect is easy to interpret while uh, giving respondents a simple and intuitive way to share their opinions. Uh, one final note on survey fatigue. Um, it's a real issue and uh, poorly designed surveys only make it worse. Uh, imagine receiving a 20 question survey full of unclear, redundant or irrelevant questions. Chances are you'd either abandon it halfway through or uh, provide a hasty, unthoughtful answers just to get it over with. Uh, to avoid this, you'll want to keep your surveys short, uh, relevant and well structured so that respondents uh, don't feel like they're being uh, interrogated. Indeed, designing an effective survey is both an art and a science. Uh, by the end of this chapter, you'll know how to define and measure attitudes and avoid common pitfalls that lead to survey fatigue or biased data. Uh, with these tools in hand, you'll then be uh, well prepared to uh, gather meaningful, uh, actionable insights uh, about your customers uh, without uh, making them groan uh, the next time they see a uh, share your feedback button. So, superstars, are you ready? I hope you strongly agree.